Okay. I'm going to demo it to you first. So when I'm talking about how I've set it up, you have something to relate to as a final picture. So at the moment, I've got an endpoint set up, a little simple um, Node.js microservice that I've set up. It just says, welcome. I would like to change it. And I would like to say welcome to DevOps Day, Cape Town. Smiley face. Okay. So now, as a developer, okay, cool. So as a, dev a developer, I've made a change. Um, I showed you guys my starting system. Now, oh, okay, that was big. Okay, so now what I've set up is a system that'll watch for changes on GitHub, and as soon as it uh, find, finds those changes coming through, it's going to trigger this pipeline. Sometimes it takes a bit longer than I'd like. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit while we wait. Um, so as mentioned, I've built the system on Jenkins. Um, I'm very, there we go, got a pipeline kicking off now. <laughs> cool, so I really like to create loosely coupled systems. It's a big part of how I like to think up my solutions. This pipeline is all being handled by a Jenkins file that I've scripted. It's a configuration that I've set up in the code file system layers. Uh, what's really cool with Jenkins pipelines is while it's building, you can check out the logs. You can see what's going on. You don't have to console in anywhere. Uh, it's quite clearly defined on what you're trying to do. And then you have full visibility of your build process. So I'm going to start with the presentation. Cool. So how do we set up the simple image building pipeline with Jenkins and Swarm? So I'm just going to talk you through my thinking. This is my learnings. These are the things I've picked up working with microservices, working with Docker, working with container orchestration. It's really important to think modular, think in small parts that will work together. Isolated parts with single responsibility, they should do a single thing, do a single thing really well. Understand the, the team's pain points as well. This is a great, uh, great source for what DevOps is about. It solves pain points in the team. We can automate so much. So actually speak to the team. Don't go and infiltrate DevOps into a, a, a team that you haven't spoken to. Uh, break your automation into repeatable steps. You always want that repeatable behavior. If you're going to ask it to do A, B, and C, if you run it again, you don't want it to chuck in a D in there, and you're like, where did that come from? Choose to create solutions that are replaceable. Uh, don't be um, uh, sentimental over any part of this pipeline or solution. At any point, you're going to wipe out and try a new thing. It's like you're going to nuke it, and you're going to say, OK, that did not work for us. That was taking 10 minutes. But you spent three weeks on it. You might need to, you might need to replace those solutions. Um, your, your pipeline should not need human intervention. You shouldn't have to go on step three now and try and insert a couple commands. Let's just run through without you needing to intervene. The initial thing, I mean, I didn't even have to press a button here. I just pushed code in, and it did everything. So I didn't even need a intervention of a button press. But generally, if you want to add a button press to a deploy, for example, perfect. That's the only intervention you have there, nothing else further on. So understand your solutions. Let's take some time to understand why you've put in these tools. I think a lot of the other speakers have mentioned the same thing. Let's not be dependent on Kubernetes just because it's called Kubernetes, though I really do like Kubernetes. I think it's great. <laughs> but let's understand why did we put Kubernetes into this? Can Kubernetes be replaced with another tool? Um, and document as much as possible. It's a major pain point on projects when you, you come into a project and you're not, you don't know 
uh, how to set it up. It's really great. And you also, um, you don't want to, once you find a solution, you don't want to have to find that solution again. So you don't want to now do it all from memory. Have it documented and it saves you a lot of time. So um, I, I've put in the corner there, these are some tips that have helped me um, think long term, but having short term focus. So in image building and pushing the images to a cloud environment, um, the manual steps that I'll have to do, um, maybe run some tests, NPM test, then wait for the test. Docker build, um, run the build command, wait for the build. Uh, push the image to Docker Hub, wait for the push. Uh, pull the image uh, down to test it, wait for it to be pulled down. And then I might test it, I might open it in a browser, I might crawl it. Cool, so why, why Jenkins and Swarm? So the team I'm working with at the moment, they, they know these tools, they know Jenkins, they know Swarm. I'm not gonna try reinvent the wheel, these are existing skills that the team knows. So before we try think of new things, I'd rather try help with the existing stack that they have. Um, I also wanted to learn Swarm. It was a tool I hadn't used yet, so I wanted to be able to compare Swarm with uh, the tools I've already used, uh, like I have played around with Kubernetes and mostly just native uh, Docker and just spinning up processes on servers. Um, and then it's also, it's an affordable tool set. Jenkins is free, Swarm is free. You can play around with it on your local computer and not worry about costs. So why automate the building of these images? So an issue I, I've noticed with some teams, uh, day before deployment, everyone is tagging and pushing code to Docker Hub. Um, you know, the, the code all works. Um, we've got uh, continuous integration set up on the code level, but not on a container level. So we, we don't actually know how that container is going to behave once we send it off into the wild, but we know the code is great. I mean, that's working. Um, then after deployment, someone forgot to build and tag the latest code. Um, someone didn't send code into a repository <laughs> and put a release up. Um, everyone has been doing too much and maintaining too many images at the same time. Um, people are losing track of changes. So let's automate those changes. Let's automate the building of those images and pushing it up and having it spin up on a server somewhere and running. So um, the, what this solves is the CI part, not necessarily the CD part. Okay, so the parts. I'm gonna chat a bit about the little layers that I've put together here for the solution. So I've set up Jenkins and I've set up Jenkins with agents. So the, the main trigger, the one that's watching GitHub, the one that's um, running the jobs, that's, that's sitting in isolation. That, that can always be uh, replaced if it needs to. There's nothing, I haven't put too much configuration into that that it's a pain point for me if someone replaces that layer. I've got um, agents, and these agents are set up on what I want to build in them. We can put Windows agents up, Microsoft. We can uh, put uh, Red Hat. We can put, and all of them will be individual, and all of them need to be, again, not sentimental. You, just, you can kill them if you need to, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, what I've got is I just needed a simple lightweight container with Docker on in order to pull images, build images, run images. Um, Again, that agent can now be killed, can totally be in, uh, taken out of the picture, and the main Jenkins will now not be affected, so there's that loose coupling again. I'm using Jenkins files. This allows me to, um, those steps that I showed you with the columns, that's all defined in code. That's all defined in a YAML, well, a s what's it? Groovy, a Groovy script. Um, each of those build steps, I can, as a developer, tweak those steps myself. I don't have to wait for a DevOps engineer to do it for me. I've used the multi-branch pipeline. This allows Jenkins to uh, watch multiple branches. You don't wanna have to, every time someone starts a new branch on Jenkins, go and create a new pipeline. Let's set up a new configuration pipeline that's gonna know, okay, this is for feature X, Y, Z. Okay, now we need one for feature A, B, C. Multi-branch pipelines will automatically pick up these feature branches. And you want that, you want that efficiency. Docker machine. <laughs> I learned Docker machine for this, and it's an amazing 
really take some time if you, if you want to get into cloud and you're looking for an easy way to just play around with um, nodes and containers and everything. Docker Machine allows you to do that locally. You don't have to go to DigitalOcean, though it's very easy. You don't have to go to AWS. It is very easy to use Docker Machine and point it to those environments. I set up nodes and um, a distributed system locally. It just uses VirtualBox and spins up lightweight containers on VirtualBox for you. And then you can easily, you just go Docker Machine SSH node name and the SSH into your node, and then you can play around a bit. Docker Machine IP your node, and you get your IP to access your node, just chuck your port in there to bind to what you spun up. Swarm. So uh, we were talking about, a, someone mentioned uh, that someone boasted about setting up Kubernetes over a weekend. So uh, Swarm, it took me like five minutes, not even. Like <laughs> my <laughs> I, I didn't, I just went, uh, so one of, we've got a Swarm guru in our team, Leslie. Um, and I just went, how do I use Swarm? And he was like, Docker Swarm in it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> That's how you activate Swarm. If you have Docker on your machine, you can activate Swarm. You just go Docker Swarm in it, and it's activated. Then uh, you can, uh, you advertise your IP. If you want to now create a cluster, add some nodes to it, you just find your join token, you go docker swarm join, add your token, now you've got a cluster. You can also use YAML to deploy to it, uh, so it also has the uh, configuration as code layer. Uh, you can, I actually converted everything I did for this into YAML files in case everything crashes and I need to quickly spin it all up again. So I've got uh, that backup of a YAML layer that I can just go uh, docker stack deploy Deploy a YAML file, and then it just spins up. Okay, demo time. <laughs> so, so I gave you guys like a glimpse of what I've set up. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here. Uh, am I good on time still? Are you on the time, guys? Okay, I'm going to go in faith that I'm good in time. Um, Cool, so this is my terminal, very tiny terminal. Okay. Can everybody see that? Is that good? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys my nodes quick. So currently I have three nodes running locally, and I've got three nodes up in DigitalOcean. So I can access DigitalOcean from my terminal. I can access my local containers. I was playing around with Rancher in preparation for my workshop. Uh, that's, I put on DigitalOcean. So I'm going to SSH into one of my local nodes. Um, so what I've done is all my nodes are um, master nodes or leaders. So all of them have the ability to do everything I need. Um, that's just from learning that if you only have one leader and you destroy that leader, then your cluster is lost. So um, these are my these are my services I've got running. Um, I've got some. Uh, I've got uh, my little GitHub. It's meant to be a GitHub. I had some great plans for this demo. <laughs> But uh, I ended up leave, um, not integrating too much with GitHub, and I ended up just putting a welcome message up. But the idea was, just make this bigger. Oh, that's not going to be bigger. Let's close this. Okay. Let's so here's this, like GitHub data that I'm actually able to pull through. So I've actually put. This is like a layer between a final layer. Cool. Okay, so there's a cool visualizer tool for Swarm. So Swarm, the services kind of keep the, the schematic of what you've told it to do. It still runs uh, processes. It's, so these are still, if I go Docker PS, I can still see these services that I'm running. 
So on this layer, I've got uh, the main Jenkins and then also my little Play Play microservice that I built. So if I go and I stop my service, you can see it's disappeared from those nodes now. And um, what and there it pops up again. So that's a service that's kind of handling it for you. So you can you so it's a little party trick, but really nice to see. <laughs> um, and then okay, cool. So just to quickly show you guys what I've got on Jenkins' side, uh, I did add the nodes. So you can, you would manage your nodes and then you would add your nodes like that. Um, it was a little bit complex to get my master node to see all my other agents. Uh, so I'm not going to do it t today, but I will, like, if you guys want to follow me, um, I've got a blog, yashicodes.com. Um, my handle on Twitter is CarrieZA. So um, I will probably uh, make tutorials out of it because it'll help me if I want to do this again. So um, that's where I manage my nodes. Cool. So um, just to show you guys that our change did take effect, so there's the welcome to DevOps Day Cape Town. So I'm just going to run through that pipeline again quick and then um, then I'll be done for my presentation and open for questions. Um, cool. So now I'm just going to say thank you to everyone. I just also have to wait for that trigger. I've set it up so that it, um, it checks every minute. You can put in better hooks, more efficient hooks. This was the lightweight demo. It's just a really quick uh, idea. Again, every little part, every step we can change. Um, oh, sorry, and I did want to show you guys the Jenkins file. So I've got the Docker file. Uh, committed into the project. So this is what will tell when you run the Docker build step. This is going to tell it what to build. Um, then I've got the the Jenkins file, which this is all the configurations that I've set up. So this is going to tell uh, Jenkins what are the steps of the build. So to build it, um, I've got arguments set up. Um, for security guys, I have a with credentials block set up. So I have no, no actual username and password stored in my uh, configuration. I'm pulling it in from Jenkins where I've stored it. So I'll just open this up quick. So I've stored it quite securely back here. That again, it, it's really great because you can give your, your developers the ID of the token and you can manage the username and password. If it changes, they don't have to worry about it. They still have that ID. So it's always going to pull the latest that you need. So a, a password change is not going to break a project. Let's check on our build quick. Cool. So our build has triggered. So we can we can watch how these guys are running. So yeah, so just to emphasize again with the, the reason I'm mentioning the Docker file and the Jenkins file and so on, I can now take that structure and I can do it on 10 projects. I can do it on 100 projects. I can do it on 1,000 projects. They will behave as expected because we've, we've almost turned our infrastructure into an algorithm that if you replace these parts, your project is going to build and run. So it's, it's really great. And um, it's cool to see that we're going in such a nice self-contained way of developing. Yes. 
correct. Um, good point. So if you if you want to, you, you're referring to that part, right? The little. Correct. Yeah. So if you uh, totally, if you want to follow your steps as they're going through, um, it's yeah, it's your choice. Um, uh, let's go back. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the visual feedback, <laughs> but yes, the <laughs> yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> it's, it's always nice to see uh, green. So uh, did I lose my project now? My place. So what I do want to show you guys as well especially people new to DevOps right now. If you look on the side here, you see all those failing builds. It took me a long time to get to a working environment, to an envi environment that felt stable. Don't be scared to fail. Don't be scared to get errors. It's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot of times. You're going to, uh, like 99% of the time you might get errors, but now you've found 99% ways not to do it, right? <laughs> so be comfortable to continuously um, fail, but stubborn enough to get to that point where it's passing. Okay, cool. So now everything is built. Now it says thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Great talk. I just wanted to ask, how do you manage your artifacts? So if you have defects, or someone comes the day before production and it's near Black Friday and they say, oh, we're doing a performance test that broke something, this is a defect, how would you manage that? So, yeah, um, this model does not keep artifacts in mind. Um, so this is definitely more like a CI solution, not a CD solution. Um, I think, how would you, I might actually have to spend a couple minutes. We can maybe chat afterwards if you're cool with that and then. Oh, right, there you go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. oh uh, wait, sorry, there's one more slide. Uh, <laughs> I do. Okay, uh, in the meantime, let me answer your question. So if you have performance issues, it means you're not ready for production, so you have to fail your ball and remain with what you oh, have, especially yes. for Black Friday, because you do not want to go down on Black Friday. <laughs> So that's one of my team members, Radhika. She is a quality assurance engineer. She is amazing. 